All India Radio presents Morning News. Good morning, I'm Sunil Barma and with me is Saira Mujtaba. The headlines. COVID not gone cannot be careless, cautions Prime Minister Narendra Modi as festival season begins. Appeals to people to remain alert during the festival celebration. COVID-19 recovery rate improves to 88.63%. Poll spending limit for candidates contesting Lok Sabha and Assembly elections enhanced by 10%. In Bihar, scrutiny of nomination papers for the third and final phase of Assembly elections to take place today. And in IPL cricket, Kings XI Punjab beat Delhi Capitals last night. Kolkata Knight Riders to take on Royal Challengers Bangalore at Abu Dhabi this evening. As the nation fights the COVID-19 pandemic, we begin with a message of precaution to stay safe and protected by following these three simple steps. Wear a face mask. Maintain do ghaz ki duri for social distancing. Focus on hand and face hygiene. And now, the news in details. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has urged people not to be complacent till there is a vaccine for the virus. In his Seventh address to the nation in the last seven months, Mr. Modi said, In the fight against Corona, people of India have come a long way from Janta curfew till today. He said, Till the vaccine of this pandemic comes out, the fight against Corona should not be weakened. The Prime Minister reminded people not to forget that even though the lockdown has gone, the virus has not gone yet. He appealed, All should remain alert during the festival celebrations. Samai ke saath आर्थिक गतिविधियों में भी धीरे धीरे तेजी नजर आ रही है हम में से अधिकांश लोग अपनी जिम्मेदारियों को निभाने के लिए फिर से जीवन को गति देने के लिए रोज घरों से बाहर निकल रहे हैं त्योहारों के इस मौसम में बाजारों में भी रौनक धीरे धीरे लौट रही है लेकिन हमें ये भूलना नहीं है कि लॉकडाउन भले चला गया हो वायरस नहीं गया है बीते सात आठ महीनों में प्रत्येक भारतीय के प्रयास से भारत आज जिस संभली हुई स्थिति में है हमें उसे बिगड़ने नहीं देना है और अधिक सुधार करना है मिस्टर मोदी सैंक्स डॉक्टर्स नर्सेज हेल्थ वर्कर्स एंड ऑल दोज हु आर सेल्फलेसली सर्विंग सच अ लार्ज पॉप्यूलेशन द प्राइम मिनिस्टर सेट कम्पेयर टू द वर्ल्ड इंडिया सेविंग मोर लाइव आज देश में रिकवरी रेट अच्छी है फेटालिटी रेट कम है दुनिया के साधन संपन्न देशों की तुलना में भारत अपने ज्यादा से ज्यादा नागरिकों का जीवन बचाने में सफल हो रहा है आज हमारे देश में कोरोना मरीजों के लिए 90 लाख से ज्यादा बेड्स की सुविधा उपलब्ध है 12,000 हजार क्वारंटाइन सेंटर्स है कोरोना टेस्टिंग की करीब 2000 हजार लैब्स काम कर रही है देश में टेस्ट की संख्या जल्द ही 10 करोड़ के आंकड़े को पार कर जाएगी कोविड महामारी के खिलाफ लड़ाई में टेस्ट की बढ़ती संख्या हमारी एक बड़ी ताकत रही है द प्राइम मिनिस्टर ऑल्सो सेट एफर्ट्स विल बी मेड टू इंश्योर कोविड वैक्सीन रीच इज ऑल बरसों बाद हम ऐसा होता देख रहे हैं कि मानवता को बचाने के लिए युद्ध स्तर पर पूरी दुनिया में काम हो रहा है अनेक देश इसके लिए काम कर रहे हैं हमारे देश के वैज्ञानिक भी वैक्सीन के लिए जी जान से जुटे हैं भारत में अभी कोरोना की कई वैक्सीन पर काम चल रहा है इनमें कुछ एडवांस स्टेज पर है आशास्पद स्थिति दिखती है कोरोना की वैक्सीन जब भी आएगी वो जल्द से जल्द प्रत्येक भारतीय तक कैसे पहुंचे इसके लिए भी सरकार की तैयारी जारी है एक एक नागरिक तक वैक्सीन पहुंचे इसके लिए तेजी से काम हो रहा है इसलिए याद रखिए जब तक दवाई नहीं तब तक ढिलाई नहीं The Prime Minister also appealed to the media to spread awareness. Do gaj ki duri, samay samay par sabun se haath dhulna aur mask lagana 
इसका ध्यान रखिए और मैं आप सबसे करबद्ध प्रार्थना करता हूं आपको मैं सुरक्षित देखना चाहता हूं ये त्यौहार आपके जीवन में उत्साह और उमंग भरे ऐसा वातावरण चाहता हूं और इसलिए मैं बार बार हर देशवासी से आग्रह करता हूं मैं आज अपने मीडिया के साथियों से भी सोशल मीडिया में जो सक्रिय है उन लोगों से भी बड़े आग्रह से कहना चाहता हूं कि आप जागरूकता लाने के लिए इन नियमों का पालन करने के लिए जितना जन जागरण अभियान करेंगे ये आपकी तरफ से देश की बहुत बड़ी सेवा होगी आप जरूर हमें साथ दीजिए देश के कोटि कोटि जनों को साथ दीजिए Union Home Minister Amit Shah has said that the safety and healthy life of Indians has been the top priority of the Modi government. In his tweet after Prime Minister Narendra Modi's address to the nation, Mr Shah said the Modi government considers that its ultimate duty is to save the lives of the citizens in this battle against the coronavirus. He also requested everyone to follow the Prime Minister's appeal not to let their guard down till a vaccine is developed. Mr Shah said only a united and determined India can overcome this pandemic. The police commemoration day is being observed today. The day is observed on the 21st of October every year to honor the loyalty and supreme sacrifice of police personnel for the nation. It was on this day in 1959 when CRPF scripted a saga of valor and sacrifice in the inaccessible inhospitable terrain of hot springs in Ladakh. A patrol party of 20 personnel of CRPF and Intelligence Bureau had gone to search for a missing reconnaissance party when it was ambushed by the Chinese army. In spite of the sudden attack and disadvantageous tactical position, they fought valiantly against the Chinese army personnel who were in large numbers and heavily armed. In this battle, 10 CRPF men were martyred in defense of the country. Home Minister Amit Shah paid tributes to martyred police personnel at the National Police Memorial in New Delhi this morning. Road Transport and Highways Minister Nitin Gadkari virtually laid the foundation stone for the first ever multimodal logistic park of the country in Assam yesterday. Assam Chief Minister Sarbanand Sonowal and Union Ministers of State Dr. Jitendra Singh, General Retired V.K. Singh and Rameshwar Tehri and several ministers of Assam also attended the event. Speaking on this occasion, Mr. Gadkari said that steps are being taken for the infrastructure development in the state. He said that the logistic park would create job opportunities in the region. सर्वानंद सोनवाल जी को और आसाम सरकार को धन्यवाद दूंगा ये जो मल्टी मॉडल हब है ये आने वाले समय में आसाम में करीब 20 लाख डायरेक्ट इनडायरेक्ट रोजगार निर्माण करेगा और ये आसाम का आर्थिक प्रगति और विकास में ग्रोथ इंजन होगा वाराणसी हल्दिया साहिबगंज गाजीपुर पे चार मल्टी मॉडल अब बनाए गए हैं इसमें से प्रधानमंत्री जी के द्वारा साहिबगंज का और वाराणसी का उद्घाटन भी हो गया अभी हल्दिया और गाजीपुर जल्दी होगा हल्दिया के बाद बंगाल की खाड़ी है और बंगाल की खाड़ी ऐसी हम लोग ब्रह्मपुत्र ऐसी डायरेक्ट नॉर्थ ईस्ट आसाम ऐसी आगे बांग्लादेश तक जा सकते हैं Don Air Minister Dr Singh said that due to the initiative of the Prime Minister the road network in the northeast has been improved a lot in the last 6 years Petroleum and Natural Gas Minister Dharmendra Pradhan has said that providing clean and reliable energy supplies to all the people is the topmost priority of the government launching the much awaited trial run of Delhi's buses on hydrogen blended CNG in New Delhi Mr Pradhan asserted that Prime Minister Narendra Modi is committed to usher in clean energy future that has minimal impact on the environment the minister said the scientists of indian oil research and development have developed an innovative compact reforming technology for production of hydrogen mixed cng he said this pilot project will be unique and it will help the country and the world as a whole you are listening to the morning news on all india radio a reminder of the headlines before we move on Covid not gone cannot be careless cautions prime minister narendra modi as festival season begins appeals to people to remain alert during the festival celebration covid 19 recovery rate improves to 88.63% poll spending limit for candidates contesting lok sabha and assembly elections enhanced by 10% in bihar scrutiny of nomination papers for the third and final phase of assembly elections to take place today and in ipl cricket Kings 11 Punjab beat Delhi Capitals last night Kolkata Knight Riders to take on Royal Challengers Bangalore at Abu Dhabi this evening 
For quick news updates around the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alert. The government today said that COVID-19 cases on oxygen support in ICUs through ventilators and oxygen supported beds have shown a significant decrease since the last week of September. In a tweet, the health ministry said this aligns with the national decline of active cases to less than 10% of the total cases. Briefing media in New Delhi yesterday, Health Secretary Rajesh Bhushan said India has recorded 310 cases per million in the last seven days, which is among the lowest globally. Mr. Bhushan said the number of people who have recovered from COVID-19 in the country has reached over 67 lakh, which is the highest in the world. The Health Secretary said... The recovery rate of COVID-19 in the country continues to improve and, as on today, the national recovery rate stands at 88.63%. A total of 3,579 new confirmed cases of coronavirus infection were reported in Delhi during the last 24 hours, taking the total number of cases to over 3,36,000. The Delhi government said that recoveries of over 3,6,000 have been reported so far. In Orissa, COVID-19 recovery has crossed the 2.5 lakh mark. 2,622 patients were reported cured yesterday, taking the total number of recoveries in the state to 2,52,197. And the cumulative caseload has increased to 2,72,250 so far. A report. The state, which once reported 4,000 plus cases daily in the last week of last month, is now witness to the daily infection plunging below 2,000. As a corollary, the active case load too has been slumping by the day, with the current count being 21,454. Meanwhile, Chief Minister Nabin Patnaik, in a video message to the people of the state, has appealed them to be extra alert during the upcoming festivals like Durga Puja and Dipavali. Describing the virus as having a critical character, the Chief Minister urged people to pledge against viral spread in the state by a avoiding crowd while still sticking to COVID-19 preventive essentials like face masking, social distancing and hand sanitizing. Giris Chandra Das, Bhavaneshwar. Gujarat recorded 1,126 new COVID-19 cases in the last 24 hours. The recovery rate has reached 88.93%. More from our Ahmedabad correspondent. The total cases detected so far in Gujarat has reached up to 1,61,848, 1,43,927 patients recovered from COVID-19 till now. 1,128 patients recovered during the last 24 hours. More than 54,79,000 tests have been carried out in the state till date. Maximum 231 new cases reported from Surat, while Ahmedabad recorded 178 new cases. At present, total active cases in the state are 40. 1,267, out of which 76 patients are on ventilator. Eight patients died yesterday, taking the total death due to COVID-19 up to 3,654. Yogesh Pandya, AIR News, Ahmedabad. Karnataka has reported more recoveries than the new COVID cases yesterday. 8,500 patients were discharged after recovering and 6,297 new COVID-19 cases were reported. The COVID recovery rate is around 84%. 66 fatalities were also reported. More in this report. Following a significant rise in the state's testing capacity, Karnataka is now among the five states whose active cases have seen a considerable drop in the past few days. The number of daily new positive cases too has reduced in the past one week. A total of over 68,44,594 samples have been tested so far, out of which 98,236 were tested yesterday alone. 78 private labs and 42 government labs are involved in the COVID test. Out of the first cases reported yesterday, 2,821 cases were reported from Bengaluru urban alone. As many as 1,3,945 active patients are taking treatment in various hospitals across the state. Among them, 941 are in ICU. Or Murthy, AER News, Bengaluru. Tamil Nadu continues to witness a downfall in the number of active COVID-19 patients. The medical bulletin issued by the State Health Department last evening says the number has come down below 37,000. More details. Through to the call of Prime Minister Narendra Modi, the Tamil Nadu government has been insisting the public not to be complacent in following the safety protocols. 
The state health principal secretary Dr. J. Radhakrishnan said officials at the grassroots levels including at the block levels have been asked to maintain strict vigil against people avoiding masks. In Chennai, the corporation officials sealed a prominent textile showroom in the heart of the city yesterday for violation of the social distancing norms. It clearly sends out a message to the other showrooms as well as the officials want to avert any formation of new hotspots for the viral spread. Especially Especially at a time when the festive shopping is gathering steam. As the Prime Minister has said, there may be improvements in the overall COVID-19 situation, but the time is not yet right to avoid the mask, hand hygiene and social distancing. Jai Singh, AAR News, Chennai. Kerala continues to report more recoveries than positive cases as 6,591 new cases of COVID were confirmed and 7,375 people have recovered from the infection yesterday in the state. 24 more deaths were reported taking the death toll in the state to 1,206. Nearly 54,000 samples were tested across the state in the last 24 hours. Presently, the total active COVID cases in Kerala are 91,922. Maharashtra has become the first state in the country to cap the prices of masks. N95 masks will now be available at Rs 19 to Rs 49, while two-layer and three-layer masks will be available for Rs 3 to 4. More from our correspondent. This maximum selling price limit will be applicable to all mask manufacturing companies, distributors, retailers in the state. All mask manufacturers, distributors, retailers in the state will be required to display the quality of the mask and a fixed maximum selling price. In case of any grievance in this regard at the state level, the Commissioner of Food and Drug Administration and at the district level, the collector will be the competent authorities. Given the need for masks in the state, the manufacturer will be required to make available the goods produced and required in the state at the prescribed rate. Government and private hostels, nursing homes, COVID care centers, dedicated COVID hospitals, etc. in the state will be required to provide the mask at the rate of 70% of the prescribed maximum selling price limit. It has been mentioned in the ruling that private hostels cannot charge more than 110% of the purchase price. Deokriya Bhattacharji, AIR News, Mumbai. Vice President M. Venkai Naidu has appealed to all the citizens not to lower their guard in the fight against COVID-19 during the upcoming festive season. In a tweet, Mr. Naidu said, Prime Minister Narendra Modi rightly advised in his address to the nation yesterday that we have to continue our fight against coronavirus by wearing masks, washing hands and maintaining safe distance till a vaccine is found and normalcy restored. The Uttar Pradesh government is expanding the Pradhan Mantri Jan Arogya Yojana Ayushman Bharat in the state. The state government is mulling over selection of beneficiaries on the basis of National Food Security Act for Ayushman Bharat scheme. More from our correspondent. The spokesperson of the government said that after making NFSA the basis of selection of Ayushman Bharat scheme, the beneficiaries of Antyoday scheme, eligible householder scheme and other government schemes will also become eligible beneficiaries of Ayushman Bharat scheme. This will increase the number of eligible beneficiary families to 3.58 crore under the Ayushman Bharat scheme in the state and about 14 crore beneficiaries will be able to benefit from the scheme. Currently, under the Ayushman Bharat scheme, the beneficiary is selected on the basis of Social Economic Ethnic Census 2011. On this basis of selection, 1.18 crore families of the state are eligible for Ayushman Bharat scheme. Sushil Chandra Tiwari, AIR News, Lucknow. The poll spending limit for candidates contesting Lok Sabha and Assembly elections has been enhanced by 10%. The centre has approved this based on the recommendation of the Election Commission that contestants be allowed to spend more on campaigning, keeping in mind difficulties they may face due to COVID-19 curbs. The notification issued by the Law Ministry last night said the maximum expenditure a candidate can incur for campaigning in Lok Sabha pools is now 77 lakh rupees. It was 70 lakh rupees earlier. The last time the expenditure ceiling was enhanced was ahead of the Lok Sabha pools in 2014. For assembly elections, it has been hiked from 28 lakh rupees to 30 lakh 80 thousand rupees. In Bihar, nomination papers for the third and final phase of assembly elections will be scrutinized today. 78 assembly seats spread over 15 districts will go to polls in this phase on the 7th of November. 884 candidates have filed their nominations for this phase. 
Candidates can withdraw their nominations till 23rd of this month. LJP has released a list of 41 candidates for the third phase of elections. More from our correspondent. Leaders of NDA and Grand Alliance are making allegations and counter-allegations during campaigning. Addressing election meeting at ARA and Buxar, BJP President J.P. Nadda alleged Grand Alliance is an unholy alliance. Lashing at the Congress, Nadda said some leaders are taking the language of separatists and anti-nationals. On the other hand, Congress General Secretary Randeep Singh Surjewala said BJP and EDU are responsible for misrule in Bihar. Addressing election rallies at Pali Ganj, Imam Ganj and Aurangabad, senior RJD leader Tajaswi Yadav said Nitish Kumar failed to provide employment to youths. Leaders of left parties, HAM and RLSP are addressing election meetings in support of their candidates. With KK Lal's report from Patna, Sanjeev Jasrotia, AIR News. In Ladakh, all arrangements are being made for tomorrow's Ladakh Autonomous Hill Development Council, LAHDC, Leh General Council elections. For the first time, EVMs are being used for voting in LAHDC Leh elections. More details in this report. The polling parties and the security personnel of the remaining 172 polling stations are scheduled to dispatch today. The first batch of parties have just left for their respective polling booth. The last batch will move from Leh at 10 a.m. this morning. The batch left yesterday have reached their destination safely. However, according to official of the Election Authority Office, the polling parties of two polling booths, Demjok and Chumur, located at zero Indochina border and two other polling booths, Rakuru and Fastan, located at Indo Park border, who have stayed overnight, will be reached their destination respective polling booths today. For two polling booths which have no road connectivity, the polling parties and the polling materials were sent by helicopters. With Ramesh Chandra, this is Yang Chandolma for AR News from Le Ladakh. On to sports now. In after cricket, Kings Eleven Punjab defeated table topper Delhi Capitals by five wickets to keep their playoff hopes alive at Dubai last night. Opting to bat first, Delhi posted 164 for 6 in 20 overs. In reply, Punjab reached the target with 5 wickets and an over to spare. Today, Kolkata Knight Riders will take on Royal Challengers Bangalore at Abu Zabi. In Telangana, moderate to heavy rain lashed several parts of the state. Spells of moderate rain hit the rain-ravaged Hyderabad again since last evening. Thousands of people from low-lying areas continue to take shelter at relief camps. A report from our correspondent. Under the influence of depression in the central bay of Bengal and accompanied upper air circulation, rains lashing several parts of Telangana, especially capital city Hyderabad. As per Met officials, the depression is likely to deepen and more rains likely for next two days. Several districts including Mehboobnagar, Vanaparthi, Vikarabad, Narayanpet and Jangaon witnessed light to moderate rainfall till this morning. Meanwhile, the state government has postponed all examinations till this era in view of floods in Hyderabad and some other parts of the state. Announcing this, Education Minister Sabita Indra Reddy said the examinations will be held after this era. The decision will provide relief to about 5 lakh students across the state. Several universities including the Jawaharlal Nehru Technological University, also postponed all undergraduate and postgraduate examinations scheduled till 22nd of this month. Lakshmi, AIR News, Hyderabad. And now let us take a look at the weather update. The national capital Delhi will have misty sky. The minimum temperature was recorded at 16 degrees Celsius and the maximum will be around 34 degrees. Mumbai will have generally cloudy sky with possibility of development of thunder or lightning. The minimum temperature was 26 degrees Celsius and the maximum will be around 32 degrees. In Chennai, there will be generally cloudy sky with light rain. The temperature will hover between 26 and 33 degrees Celsius. Kolkata will have generally cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. The minimum temperature in the city was 27 degrees Celsius while the maximum will be around 32 degrees. On to the north in the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir, the minimum temperature was 16 degrees Celsius in Jammu, while the maximum will be around 33 degrees. The city will have a mainly clear sky. In Srinagar, the sky will be mainly clear sky, becoming partly cloudy towards afternoon or evening. The temperature in Srinagar will hover between 3 and 24 degrees Celsius. Leh in Ladakh will have mainly clear sky. The minimum temperature was minus 5 degrees Celsius and the maximum will be around 20 degrees Celsius. 
Gilgit and Muzaffarabad will experience mainly clear sky becoming partly cloudy towards afternoon or evening. The temperature will hover between 5 and 28 degrees Celsius in Gilgit. In Muzaffarabad, the minimum temperature was 13 degrees Celsius and the maximum will be around 31 degrees. Chandigarh will witness mainly clear sky. The minimum temperature was 16 degrees Celsius while the maximum will be around 33 degrees Celsius. In Ahmedabad, it will be partly cloudy sky. The temperature will hover between 26 and 36 degrees Celsius. Guwahati will witness generally cloudy sky with light rain or drizzle. The minimum temperature in the city was 23 degrees Celsius while the maximum will be around 33 degrees. And now an overview of today's newspapers. In its lead story, the pioneer quotes the prime minister as saying, "Jab tak dawai nahi, tab tak dhilai nahi." PM warns on eve of festivals, virus still there, be cautious, writes the Asian Age. New COVID-19 cases dip below 50,000 for first time in nearly 3 months, reports the statesman. India may drop plasma therapy to treat COVID, writes the Hindu Business Line. 30 million frontline workers to get vaccine in phase 1, reports Hindustan Times. The Economic Times quotes HDFC CEO as saying that growth may return to 9% if India ticks all the right boxes. Financial Express reports Hindustan Unilever chairman and MD are saying that rural demand is picking pace but urban demand is still a concern. Punjab Assembly rejects enters farm laws clears own with MSP benchmark is the headline in the Indian Express. With temperature dipping to 13.7 degrees Celsius, Delhi experienced the coldest October night in 11 years, reports the Times of India. And finally, with stubble burning and construction as causes, Ballabgarh in Haryana records country's worst air quality, reports the Tribune. Farm fire rages in neighborhood Delhi suffers, writes the Pioneer. And now before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Covid not gone cannot be careless cautions prime minister narendra modi as festival season begins appeals to people to remain alert during the festival celebration covid-19 recovery rate improves to 88.63% poll spending limit for candidates contesting lok sabha and assembly elections enhanced by 10% in bihar scrutiny of nomination papers for the third and final phase of assembly elections to take place today And in IPL cricket Kings 11 Punjab beat Delhi Capitals last night Kolkata Knight Riders to take on Royal Challengers Bangalore at Abu Dhabi this evening and with that we end the morning news have a nice day